We are gathered here in New York City at NBC in Studio 6A, where in just a moment, Conan O'Brien, the host of Late Night with Conan O'Brien, will enter the studio and deliver his State of the Show address to various members of his staff, the studio audience, and a national television audience watching at home. There, of course, is band leader Max Weinberg, along with the show's announcer, Joel Goddard, both of whom have been with the show since the very beginning. And now I believe here comes Conan's executive producer, Jeff Ross, coming down the steps. And right behind him, we see Conan's visualization therapist, a woman known only as Waterfall. <laughs> uh, I have just been told Conan O'Brien is about to be introduced. Here now is John Cullen, the late night sergeant at arms. Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of the show. And there he is. There is Conan Christopher O'Brien. He is acknowledging his fans. He wants them to know how much they mean to him. I don't think it's lost on him that he, he knows they're the backbone of the show. Without them, he wouldn't be here. And this is his moment to let them know that. The fans are appreciative. And now he's going, oh, we've got a fan is doing the fake out handshake and he's done it again. Not really the time or the place to see something like this. Well, now they're gonna hug and apparently he is, now he's faking out with the hug. A clearly rattled Conan O'Brien, but wisely he is moving on from that moment. And moving on to some of the more respectful and appreciative fans. Still making his way down to the podium. There's members of the Max Weinberg 7, Conan acknowledging their great work, year in, year out, day after day. And now he's moved on to some of his most trusted characters. He's talking to the coked up werewolf, who's looking very paranoid and uptight. Conan clearly trying to calm him down. And there we see the drowned redneck. It's great he could make it tonight. And Tony is moving on. Oh, there is little Jay Leno, the tiny version of Jay Leno. And now, oh, this is a very awkward moment. This is a character who was cut in the rehearsal. It's the FedEx Pope. Conan has explained to him that he was cut, and now FedEx Pope is... Indeed, heading out of the studio with his FedEx Pope hat. Conan now moving on to the podium, about to begin his speech. Let's, uh, let's listen to what he has to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me begin by saying that because tonight I am giving the state of the show address, I will not be doing my usual monologue this evening. Before I go any further, there are some people I want to acknowledge here tonight. I'm very proud to introduce two of the youngest members of the Late Night family. There is Jamie, the new intern that is sleeping with Max. <laughs> and there's Kelly, the intern from last summer who used to sleep with Max. <laughs> when you think Late Night, you think diversity. Diversity as evidenced by the presence here tonight of Toshi, our announcer, Joel Goddard's Asian male prostitute. <laughs> and Hassan, the Pakistani motel owner who rents them affordable rooms for sexual encounters. <laughs> None of which would be possible without the tolerance and cultural sensitivity of Gregor, Toshi's Ukrainian-born pimp who has only beaten Joel twice. <laughs> Folks, tonight I stand before you to tell you the state of the show is very strong, but there are some problems, and we can make this show better. 
For example, Late Night is running dangerously low on celebrities to make fat jokes about. <laughs> it's true, celebrities like Brando, Pavarotti, and Anna Nicole Smith. We've done them a million times, we're running low. That's why we've begun force-feeding a new crop of celebrity targets, <laughs> such as Marissa Tomei, fat now. Craig T. Nelson, now fat as a house. And of course, the new super fat Louis Anderson. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. We strove and we did better. Now to continue, it gives me great... Hey, coked up werewolf, please. Right over there. Right over there. Settle down. It gives me great pride to announce that NBC has authorized a much-needed $4 billion anti-boo defense shield. This will ensure that no boos make their way from the audience to me. Here is what our show sounded like for much of last year. And ladies and gentlemen, here is what you will hear with the new anti-boo defense shield. You see, all boos have now been intercepted. You suck! Still working on the You Suck Shield. That's next year. Now, I know most of you probably expect a speech like this to contain nothing but lies. But tonight, I'm gonna give you more than just lies. I'm gonna give you an awesome light show! Okay, back to the lies. In 2003, you can expect more razor-sharp political wit and satire, and a lot less silly, arbitrary humor. Isn't that right, Jewish turtle riding a mechanical bull? There is a problem here at Late Night, I don't mean to be a downer, but there is a problem. We have run dangerously low on enemies to joke about. Last year, of course, we mocked Christina Aguilera endlessly for wearing whore makeup. <laughs> That's an undoctored photo. But so far this year, Late Night is enemy free, and to be frank, our show has suffered as a consequence. But the suffering ends tonight. Bring out the Late Night Enemy Wheel. As you can see, the Late Night Enemy Wheel offers eight possibilities of people who could become new targets in 2003 for our biting wit and deadly satire. And they are a man noted primarily for playing Gandhi, Ben Kingsley, cycling sensation Lance Armstrong, Queen of Style, Martha Stewart, Yanni, Geraldo, from Good Morning America, Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson, Garfunkel, and just to fill out the wheel, Christina Aguilera. And the winner is... Christina Aguilera! Oh my. Incredible. What's this? I'm being told we already have a new Christina Aguilera joke. This is very exciting. Hot off the presses for your enjoyment. The Northeast is still in the middle of a terrible cold snap. That's right, it was so cold in New York today, Christina Aguilera was spotted wearing a fur thong. Yes, late night is great. And during the next year, it will strive to be even better. And that push starts tonight as I welcome my guests, rapper and actor LL Cool J. From the movie Daredevil, Joe Pantoliano. And the musical guest, Neil Finn. That's right. I promise with work and determination, we can pull together and make this the best late night show ever. God bless, and I thank you. 
And that is it. A masterful speech. One people will certainly be talking about for days, possibly even weeks to come. He has certainly set a strong tone for the upcoming year at Late Night. And he'll be right back with his first guest, rapper and actor, LL Cool J.